NOx emissions, nitrogen oxide emissions, in the UK are already below the requirements that we were supposed to meet by 2029, and we got below those targets two years ago. Oh yeah, which of course means, why are we having these draconian measures to curtail emissions from cars when we've actually already met our objectives? And this stuff that I'm talking about is from the government's own website. Oh yeah. A brown car guy. Brown car guy. Right, so in a couple of videos recently, I've been correctly pulled up on the fact that when I've talked about emissions from the tailpipe of cars, exhaust pipe, tailpipe, whatever you get, Americanisms, English, it's all international now, what difference does it make? People, some, some people may, may not realize that I've spent half my career in the Middle East and half here, and the, in the Middle East is very Americanized as well, so, you know, my language sort of encompasses, you know, an international uh, scope, if you like. So, anyway, tailpipe emissions. And I've twice said carbon dioxide when I should have just said, uh, sorry, uh, nitrogen dioxide when I should have just said uh, NOx, nitrogen oxides. But the, the, thing, the thing is in my mind, what I know, and I think that's probably why I say that A, it's, it's a slip of the tongue because it just rolls off the tongue better, right? But B, because in my mind I know that it's the carbon dioxide actually that are the problem. That's the stuff that causes the problem with your health. So let's just break this down, and I'm getting this data off a government website, so this is off a government website. Um, so all of this stuff is coming from gov.uk. What are nitrogen oxides and what are their emissions? Nitrogen oxide refers to nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide, both of which are mainly formed during the combustion of fossil fuels. The dominant portion of these gases is nitric oxide, which can react with other gases in the atmosphere to form nitrogen dioxide which is harmful to health. Now, these reactions take place very quickly, but they are reversible. So the gases are together commonly referred to as NOx, nitrogen oxides. So one thing to keep in mind though, when we talk about nitrogen in the air and stuff like that, nitrogen is 78% of the air anyway. Uh, oxygen is about 20-21%, nitrogen is 78%, and the rest are just various different gases and stuff. So nitrogen is actually already an important part of the gases that we have to have in the air. Um, it's an inert gas. It can be harmful if it completely overtakes that number and it becomes like 90, 100% or whatever, because then there's not enough oxygen. But overall, it's an inert gas. But like I said, I mean, nitrogen dioxide is what is harmful. Now, the most recent uh, assessment that they have here, quality assessment, is from 2022. Now, while they say that it was UK was non-compliant at a number of roadside locations, the non-compliant with the air quality standard regulations of 2010, uh, this was at a number of roadside locations in some urban areas. But on average, 65% of NOx concentration of roadsides originate as NOx emissions from road transport. So therefore, that's why you know it is fair to look at road transport. But and short-term expo exposure to concentrations of nitrogen dioxide can cause uh, inflammation of the airways and increase its susceptibility to respiratory infections and to allergens. It can also exacerbate the symptoms of those already suffering from lung or heart conditions. Uh, NOx can also have uh, environmental impacts, deposits, uh, deposit, deposition of nitrogen to the environment, both directly as a gas Dry deposition and precipitation, wet deposition, can soil chemistry, okay, can, sorry, can soil chemistry, can change soil chemistry and uh, affect biodiversity in sensitive habits, habitats, sorry, habitats. They're not wearing habits, they're in habitats. Nuts can react with other air pollutants. These are MBOCs, volatile organic compounds to form ground-level ozone. Ozone is a gas which is damaging to human health and can trigger inflammation of the respiratory tract, eyes, nose and throat, as well as uh, asthma attacks. Ozone can also have adverse effects on the environment through oxidative damage to vegetation, including crops. So NOx can also be emitted by natural processes, such as wildfires and as a result of human activities and the combustion of fuels. The National Atmospheric uh, Emissions Inventory and the Statistical Tables published as part of this release mostly 
covers NOx emissions from human activities. That's what this is looking at. Right, so let's look at the trends though. So we've established, we know, and there's no, you know, there's no disputing that, you know, if these things are known to be harmful, they're known to be harmful, you know, there's no need to dispute that, right? But what we've got to look at is how much of it is out there. At the end of the day, we can't erase the atmosphere, we can't delete the environment, you know, we have to live in what we have to live in, right? We have to do the best we can do. Have we done the best that we can do? Well, check this table out, I'm going to put it on screen. I'm going to leave it on screen so that you can study it. This is the annual emissions of nitrogen oxides in the UK between 1970 and 2022. Look at those two uh, little, uh, see that dotted line in the bottom right? And it says kind of claptrap. It looks like it says claptrap. It doesn't. And it says ERC. So ERC refers to emission reduction and commitment applicable between 2020 and 2029 as set out in the National Emission Ceilings Regulation 2018. This applies to the series nitrogen oxide minus emissions from agriculture. So this is not looking at agriculture. Actually, this chart doesn't look at agriculture. It says that on the chart. And what I said was claptrap. It's not claptrap. It's CLRTAP. It refers to the emission reduction commitment applicable from 2020 onwards, as set out on the, in the Convention on Long Range Trans Boundary Air Pollution. And this applies to nitrogen oxides. You can see by 2022, on this table, we are well below both of those requirements. We have dropped considerably between 1970 and that. So emissions of NOx have decreased by 78% to 643,000 tons in 2022. This trend was driven by a decline in coal use and power stations, and by the modernization of the road transport fleet. Uh, I've, I've said, you know, we have better tailpipe emissions from cars since the mid 90s, much, much better. Emissions of NOx decreased by 4% between 2021 and 2022. And this is similar to the change since 1990. Total emissions have decreased by an average of 4% per year between 1990 and 2022. That's great, well done, good achievements. But it's like, you know, when you've got down this low, it's like, how much more lower can you get? You know? Is this really the problem? The latest data shows that the UK did meet the 55% emission reduction commitment for NOx in 2022. We met it. We met it. We've done it, you know? We've, it's fallen by 1,076,000 tonnes since 2005. Emissions have decreased by 63% since 2005. So why are motorists, don't forget, this is 2022. We've already hit our targets. At the end of 2023, the extension to ULES was announced. And one of the reasons that was NOx and particulate emissions. You know, that we're all in danger because we got all NOx, but we've already reduced it significantly. And if you say, well, there's urban areas. Yeah, but there's urban areas. There's human activity. What are you going to do? I should just add this. Emissions from NOx, from, uh, from non-road transport, Decreased, this is uh, aviation, rail, and shipping. This has also decreased by 47%, 47% between 2005 and 2022. And it contributed 15, just 15% 15 of NOx emissions in 2022. The introduction of the catalytic converter and stricter emission regulations resulted in the downward trend in emissions after 1990. What did I just say? What did I just say? This is due to the replacement of older vehicles in the vehicle fleet with newer vehicles that met stricter emission standards and more recently, the uptake of electric vehicles. Annual emissions for road traffic has just decreased by 68%, like I said, from 2005 to 2022. Even emissions from power stations is down by 75% from 2005 to 2022. Hey, are you liking this video? Then make sure that you hit the like button. That's really important. Also, tell everybody. I want to share another one for, with you, and uh, this is also from a government website. And this is, I just want to share the chart with you. This is the long-term trends in emissions of air pollutants. Now, this chart includes the key things that, for example, ULIS tackles, and the cars are targeted for, which, of course, is nitrogen oxide, but also particulate emissions. And, you know, they will be continued to target by that. If you saw my Euro uh, 7 video, you'll see the emphasis on NOx, on uh, particle emissions and particle emissions not just from the tailpipe but also from tires and brakes 
So you'll see that you know motorists and cars are continuing to be targeted on this. But look at this chart. I'm leaving it on the screen now. Look at this chart. Look at it very carefully. This is again from 1970 till now, till 2022. You can see on on the right there the nitrogen oxides, the PM10 and the PM2.5. I mean that's a massive drop. I mean you know you were virtually look look you know, look how low we, we look how low we are. There has been a long-term decrease in estimated emissions of all the air pollutants covered by this statistical release. Ammonia, nitrogen oxides, non-methane volatile organic compounds, particulate matter, PM10, PM2.5, and sulfur dioxide. Many factors are responsible for the long-term decrease in emissions of these air pollutants. The reduction in coal use for domestic heating and power generation has been a major factor in reducing emissions of particulate matter. The change from using coal to gas for power generation and fitting flue gas to desulfurization equipment to existing coal-fired power stations has been responsible for long-term decreases in emissions of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide. Stricter emission regulations for road transport has led to reductions and stricter emissions placed on the industry have reduced emissions from solvents which is more to do with vol volatile organic compounds. So, the point is, the point of sharing this with you is that we are constantly being told, here I am at a very busy roundabout, I'm fine, we are constantly being told that cars need to be hit with these draconian restrictions and measures on reducing the emissions from their tires, their brakes, their exhaust pipes, because you know, we're all being polluted to death. But look at the difference. I was born in 1968. So I grew up at this time, 1970 to 2022. That's a massive difference. A massive difference. And it's good. I mean, plaudits and congratulations to, to everybody that's worked towards that. But I think that, you know, at some point you go, well, okay, yeah, we've done it. We've done it. We're okay. Let's look at other stuff now. Let's look at other stuff. Let's look at other stuff that's causing more bigger problems. Right now, for example, you talk about, I mean, you're telling me that I have to not use my 1989 BMW 325i for the short journeys that I used to use it for now. I cannot use it because that is detrimental to public health and to the environment. Meanwhile, you've got a rain of missiles falling on Ukraine and on Gaza. You got Iran firing 300 missiles and drones into Israel, knowing full well that none of them would have any impact whatsoever. So that was just purely a show of, uh, that was a, a, a face saving show of force that was completely a wasteful exercise. But that, that's what's happening in the world. That's the sort of stuff that happens in the world. And yet, me not using my BMW for a few miles in London is going to make the difference. And I'm sure a lot of other people feel the same way I do as well about that. So there you go. I think that, you know, this is worth talking about. It's worth uh, explaining to people. And especially now that we're facing these uh, elections and we have candidates that are probably going to introduce much, much more stringent and further draconian restrictions on our freedom to own and drive our cars. I think it is worth uh, explaining to people that the air is really not as bad as they're making it out to be because the hard work has already been done and any gains you gain from now on are going to be very minute and not going to make a huge amount of difference. Catch you all in the next video. Check this out guys, it's my book, it's my first novel and it's written for car fans like you. It's a fun political action thriller, it's full of cool cars and spectacular action. Get your copy now at Amazon.com.